10 things I wish I knew in my 20s. This would help me with my everyday life, my everyday carry, all that good stuff, just family life in general. Some of the stuff you may already know, some of this stuff that you may be trying to figure out yourself. I myself, I'm about to enter my 40s soon and I'm just kind of reflecting. The very first thing I gotta think about is that you are responsible for everything that happens in your life. You know, growing up, I was kind of always told that, you know, I would, I would kind of refuse to take responsibility for things that went bad and but also for things that went good. I also didn't really take responsibility for at that either, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because you would think, you know, you want to celebrate your wins and take responsibility for your losses. If something good happened to me, I just felt like I couldn't take credit for it. Felt like I was it was lucky or it was left up to God or stuff like that. What I've realized in my, you know, growing up is at the end of the day, if you rely solely on an outside source to bring you happiness or to punish you for your wrongdoings, then you're in big trouble. How to react to the circumstances and what you achieve in a lifetime is entirely up to you. You should celebrate your wins. You should absolutely take responsibilities for your losses. And that's something that will, I think, benefit you quite a lot in the future. Number two, life is too short. Don't take yourself too seriously. I had, this was a hard thing for me to learn when I was in the Marines. Everything was just always fast paced, always kind of like on the go. You know, I never really took the time out to understand that life is too short to worry about these small mundane things that I always was concerning myself with. We're doing a little bit of Old Town coffee this morning. We're doing a, an espresso, maybe an Americano. We'll see how I feel. 18 in. We're gonna try to do 36 out. See what we do around that. Life is too short to take yourself too seriously. You know, in the Marines, I was always kind of like, like I say, just so gun ho so worried about stuff all the time that I almost kind of like missed the entire forest for a couple of particular trees. You ever heard that saying before? But the biggest thing is I had a really good best friend. She lived in Florida and she was kind of like the catalyst that helped me realize that life is too short. You know, she passed away from breast cancer about two years ago and she was my age, you know, and it just, it sucks because her death, watching her husband grieve, it kind of just reminded me, it kind of took me to the place that it's too short to think about that stuff. And you need to really kind of dissect your way through that. Number three is attachments can lead to suffering. We live in a fast paced world. We're always worried about what's coming up next. And the thing is, is that when we become overly attached to something, when we're bombarded by material things, everyday carry, those attachments can sometimes uh, feel like a possession that needs to go with us everywhere that we go to. And inevitably that might make you suffer, especially when you have a loss of those particular items. Overly being attached to something is not necessarily the best thing in the world. The reason is simple. Everything is temporary and you need to learn to let go. And the, this paradox is that the less that you care about what you that you're going to lose, the more abundance that you're going to have in your life. If you're always sweating about something that could be taken away from you, that could be lost, then you're going to have that attachment could lead to suffering. It could lead to a lack of growth with inside of you. And I believe that, hey, don't get overly attached to stuff. That also kind of includes dogs and humans and things. All of them are temporary. Every single one that I mentioned, except for roaches, those things last forever. So if you want to get attached to roaches, then go for that. Number four, money comes from creating value. That doesn't matter if you work a you work with your hands as an HVAC technician, you work in a warehouse, you do YouTube for a living you're a wedding uh, filmmaker, whatever. You make more money or you make the money that you need by creating value. You're a better worker at work, you take notice of that, you are creating value. If you're an entrepreneur, you're running your own thing, I've noticed that if you create value, if you create uh, something where people feel like that you are helping them win, you will ultimately, you will ultimately make more money number five marriage is hard but it is totally worth it speaking of totally worth it we got this freaking good looking cup here 
of espresso, but I'm, I'm gonna turn it into an Americano, but it's it's really nice looking. I, I kind of could have left it as an as a espresso, but marriage is hard, but it's totally worth it. It doesn't matter if you're married or if you're in a relationship, that long-term commitment is totally worth it. it. It's being a couple versus being individuals. Everybody has their preference, but I'm talking about for me particularly, it's very valuable to be able to bounce that off of one another. It is hard. It's not going to be glamorous. It's not movie like. It's not about finding your soulmate. That does. That's not a thing. It's about constantly putting in the work and showing up when your partner needs you the most. If you can remember those things, then you're going to have a fruitful relationship or a marriage. In my opinion, I have a failed marriage and I'm currently married for almost six years. So I got a little bit of experience on this. I'm pretty sure there's some folks that can comment down below that have a little bit even more experience and can uh, attest to the things that are absolutely hard about those. But number six, investing in yourself pays off. The greatest asset you have going on in your life is you. OK, investing in yourself, whether it's going to school, trade school, putting money into your business, buying that piece of equipment that you can use, the stuff that I even make, you know, buy to purchase to make my YouTube channel better. Investing in yourself does pay off. It may not pay off immediately, but it will. My brother's currently going through an apprenticeship program to become an electrician. I don't know if he's an apprentice or a journeyman or what level he's at, but he's been doing it consistently for a good amount of time and it's already starting to pay off. He's making more money than he's ever had before. He's getting more connections than he's ever had before, experiences and to the point where he'll eventually be able to start his own business. Invest in yourself because it can pay off. Number seven, what you don't like about others is a part of you. Listen, everything that's in your shadow, sometimes you ever hear the saying that things that are in your shadow are still a part of you, even if you try to hide them in the dark. Whenever sometimes you find something you don't like about another, a lot of times what I've noticed is that we're actually projecting some of those things that we're talking about with somebody else. We could look deep and hard in ourselves and find that those are things we don't like about ourselves. I'm talking about myself talking about this and, you know, learning this from the last couple of decades that just because you identify something you don't like about someone else, look at yourself hard because you might be talking about something that lies within you. And if you don't understand and accept that concept, then it's always gonna stay a part of you and you're never gonna be able to develop and work on it. Number eight, trust your friends, but trust your gut even more. Listen, not just friends, but even people you get review advice from, you're watching YouTubers when it comes to looking for some tech or EDC stuff or new stuff for your house or your makeup or whatever have trust in them but trust your gut more your friends directly in your life you're trying to figure out maybe a child custody issue or what a house that you should buy or the next car that you should maybe sell or get rid of or what should you do about your 15 year old that's going chaotic trust your friends but trust your gut more organically that's built inside of you as you develop throughout the years you have the right decision kind of built in you if as long as you can sit down and give yourself a little bit of time to kind of mend through that process so that's a big one for me, particularly. Number nine, you may have the best intentions, but you may still F everything up. OK, listen, there's been plenty of times in my life that I was well intentioned and I still failed. I am not a wedding planner. I'm not a wedding decorator. I am not good at it. My wife has a wedding decorating business that she does on the side. I have helped her at several weddings. I was the guy at the wedding that mucked stuff up, okay? I was well intentioned, it's my wife, it's a wedding, it's a one-time thing. I'm lighting candles incorrectly, I'm setting up stands at the wrong angle, I'm lighting candles too early and they're, they're reducing their wax well before the reception, I'm giving wrong instructions to caterers, like I'm mucking stuff up, okay? Meaning that no matter how good your intentions are, there's gonna be situations in life where you just screw it all up. There's nothing you can do about it. You need to be able to grasp that and learn what your weaknesses are and maybe, maybe either try to develop those weaknesses or avoid them all together. OK, number 10, one of the big ones is social media is ruining your life. OK, so social media kind of came about in my 20s. So I came up in the days before MySpace existed, before cell phones. My very first phone was a a Sony Ericsson phone where you had to snap the camera into the bottom of it. Then I got a Nokia phone. Both of those companies are no longer pumping out phones. 
the Sony is, but not not in a collaboration with Sony Ericsson. And I came in the, the days of MySpace and burning MP3s onto a CD and popping them in my car when I got in. You know, social media was not a big thing back then. I, I was on board before Facebook existed. Now, it seems to be ruining 20 year olds lives. Doom scrolling, trying to keep up with trends. Everyone dresses the same now. That's one thing I've noticed. Me and my wife go out on dates pretty often and we'll look around and be like, man, all these broads in here are wearing like the same outfit in different variations, textures, or colors. Social media. All these people taking the same photos, have the same lights, doing the most. Social media. People are so invested in their phones that they're spending less time in life. And, you know, I would even encourage you not to watch my videos if they're ruining your life. If YouTube is sucking your life up, then maybe I'm gonna get less views, but I want you to focus on that. I guess a bonus, a bonus, a, a, a sneaky number 11 would be wait two weeks to see if you need to respond to stuff, okay? You get a crazy text message, a crazy message. Maybe you got something that's going on in your life. If you can wait two weeks, somebody tells you a juicy secret and you just really wanna tell somebody else. What I tell people is if you can make it two weeks without disclosing that secret, responding to that nasty text message, going over to someone's house and causing some drama, you've made it past the issue. Same thing when it goes to the internet. Two weeks is my go-to, but comment down below. What are some things that you wish you knew in your 20s? Are you in your 20s? Any of these things make sense to you? You want me to tell me to pound sand? It is what it is. You're more than welcome to do that type of stuff. This is the EDC cup and I need to finish my freaking cup itself. Yeah, that was a good cup of coffee. First time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, join the Discord. And thank you once again for watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.